But how's your week been so far? Good. Yeah, it's been hot, and I got, you know, I love the heat. I, I do. I, yeah. I do love the heat. But there's a certain temperature that if you're not near or in a body of water, it's just too hot. Like, it, it's just unbearable. And we got teased with that beautiful, like, 70-degree day mm-hmm. for, like, my little long sleeve, and I did the whole thing. And now I'm like, well, I'm sold on it. Yep. I made my own, like, pumpkin coffee creamer. I'm in. Like, okay, <laughs> if it's going to be fall, it's going to be fall, but now it's not. It's false fall. Yeah. And now we're into the second It was summer. like, it was, it was not even 24 hours of false fall. It no, was like, it like 12 hours yeah. of 70 degree weather and we all went full in on it. Well, there was the one morning where when I woke up, it was 59 mm-hmm. and had to wear a long sleeve. I wore a long sleeve to walk tux, but then by the middle of the day, it was 90. I was like, yeah. it was a 30 degree swing in like <laughs> four hours. Like, yeah. It's just, and it's just it's still not human. okay. Theoretically, today's the last day of 90s. We'll yeah, but we just true. go down to like the high next week is like eighty eight. Like, so. it's bad when you see mid eighties. You're like, it's cooler. We're getting we're there. there. We're getting we're there. We're chipping away at oh, it. I know. I hope we get an actual fall though, and it doesn't just like dive down to forty five. Yeah, I would agree. It's been like yeah. that some years. I remember some years in October, it's like super hot, and you're sweating at the mm-hmm. state fair, and then other years, it's like bundled up. Yeah, you have no way to predict it either. I mean, that's like dated, like one day to the next. Yeah. it's terrible, and then you get like. The worst is Halloween because yeah. these poor kids, you're like, it's going to be cold. I'll get them something that'll keep them warm. And then it's 80 degrees and you're like, well, now they're going to have a heat stroke Yeah, trying to get candy. Yeah. When I grew up in Wisconsin, Halloween, you always wore a winter jacket mm-hmm. over whatever costume you had. So it didn't even matter what your costume was because you had a winter jacket and a hat over the top of it. Yeah. And it was like, that was just Halloween. So. Yeah. Jet, the one year he was the ghost. I don't know if you saw those pictures. Yeah. And I literally made it out of like the blanket. Yeah. And I just cut holes in it. He, we would have to take it off in between the houses. And he was just drenched in sweat. And I was like, oops. Sorry, bud. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm ready for the heat to pass. Uh, I'm, re- I, I'm ready for it to get cool. Football's finally back, which is nice. It makes you start to feel like it's starting to be fall. Mm. Pumpkin spice latte is back. So a lot of good things are going on, and we were sitting around thinking about what we want to chat about today, and we figured recovery in the form yes. of stretching or mobility work and all these different terms might be an interesting topic because mm-hmm. you and I have both had our fair share of programs and stretching and mobility, and as coaches, you try and like bring it to your athletes, and I can't name a single athlete who's ever told me like my mobility is great. I think every single athlete I've ever worked with is like, I have yeah. bad mobility because I think they're, you know, kind of fed that through social mm-hmm. media. So we figured it might be nice to chat about what we're talking about when it comes to mobility, things we've tried, things we've liked, things we haven't liked, um, because there is a lot out there. There is. There's so much that they kind of shove at you. And it's like, you know, I kind of go on the path of like mobility work or stretching work or recovery the good recovery, the good mobility, the good stretching is the 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 stuff that you fit into your schedule. Yeah. Whatever you can fit in, that's good for you. Yep. Like a lot of times people are like, oh, well, I could do yoga for an hour, but I don't have an hour to do yoga. Well, that's okay. Like, yeah. do you have a minute to sit in the bottom of a squat? That'll do you. Like whatever you can fit in, that's what's going to be good for you. Yeah. It, it Everyone overcomplicates it, sells you all these programs, all this kind of stuff, and it's just, it makes it much more difficult to adhere to it. Yeah. And I'm kind of curious, what do you think is the reason why so many people say like, I have bad mobility or like my mobility is poor. What have you kind of seen or interacted with, with that? Well, they do. <laughs> Shock. If, I, if I'm being honest, most people do because of just the lifestyle we, we live now. And it's just, it's bad. Like when we sit in desks all day or we sit watching TV, like we're in this hard position, we're on our phones and it's really tough to get out of it unless someone's like whacking you in the face. Like, Hey, like pick your head up. Hey, roll your shoulders back. And like being a mom, it's got, it has a term. It's called mom shoulders. Yeah. And it's from children like this all the time. And it's just like, it's just our lifestyles don't lend themselves to good mobility anymore. Yeah. So I would say, People do have bad mobility as yeah. a general sense. And, and I think, too, if you go to a gym and you work out, there's no better way of, like, putting it right in front of your face than when you're asked to get into a certain position, mm-hmm. whether it's a squat or a press overhead or to hold certain positions. You're like, my body can't get there. Like, yeah. I cannot get my hips low enough for this squat or I can't get my arm overhead. And all of a sudden, you're met with, like, wow, I 
my body can't move. Mm -hmm. And the way you hear people talk about like it's designed or whatnot to move, it's always interesting because you're like, so at one point in time we had that ability yeah. and then over time we've lost it due to environmental factors, the way we live, things like that. So for folks who out there are like, yeah, my mobility is bad, mm -hmm. ankle mobility, shoulder mobility, hip mobility, whatever it is, what are your sort of initial thoughts then? Like, how do we get better at it? How do we improve it? Because yeah. it feels like a long road. I, it is. And that's one of the ones where you have to cheer on those, those baby steps or maybe like yeah. take a picture of yourself at the bottom of a squat in January and check it out in December because that's the only way you're going to see that big change. Yeah. And the best thing to do, you know, within a one hour class period, besides telling someone to like stretch for an hour, is to move to your full range of motion as smoothly and consistency, consistently with quality that you can. Mm -hmm. So like if it's a workout with a bunch of thrusters like we did today, like you might need to slow it down so that you can push yourself as low as you can mm -hmm. and then press out as high as you can. And it might take a little bit away from your intensity, but if you're moving that full range of motion, you keep doing it, doing it, doing it, you're going to keep getting lower and you're going to keep getting into a better overhead position. Yeah, and the thing that comes to my mind is there's certain positions we like to get into, whether it is a squat or a press. Spending time in those positions is one of the great tools you can use. And then there's also you know exercises or some people call it stretching, mobility work we can do to help get us there a little bit. Uh, maybe faster. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is when I step into a gym, I know that as somebody who has a desk job or I sit a lot, I can't just like walk in and the coach be like, hey, three, two, one, you're going to give me, yeah. you know, 10 squats. If coaches do that, I'm always like, oof, all right, I have to really be thoughtful on that first couple squats of like, how's mm -hmm. the body feeling? I'm someone who personally likes to kind of ease my way into yeah. it, where this is where like yoga flows and things like that come into play. But how do you think about, you know, getting yourself ready for movement or exercise? Like, do you like to do mobility work? Do you mm -hmm. like to stretch? Do you like to get warm? Like, there's so many different sort of theories and ideas on it. What have you seen that you like or how do you like to coach yeah. people there? So with coaching, I mean, I'm, I've been known to say you can't start a CrossFit class without doing lizard. Like, mm -hmm. you got to get into lizard. It's yeah. a, a great stretch. It opens you up. It really... Because sometimes you do that first squat and it like your hip flexors are like, like it just feels terrible. <laughs> you can but hear you everybody's like, knees. Yeah, and yeah. Just, <laughs> you do lizard a few times with some like sun salutations and then you're good to go. Yeah. So I do love that stretch. I don't like sitting in stretches too long. Yeah. I don't think that's great for the joints to just kind of mash on them like that. I like to move around a little bit. And then with myself, I kind of go through these phases of like certain routines I like to hit before mm -hmm. I do something, depending on what joint is giving me issues at that time. But it's only like you said, like a flow, like a hip flow, moving through a certain amount of reps or things like that. And then you do that. And then once you stretch it all, mobilize it, you got to reactivate it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, a point that a lot of people miss. They like lull these uh, muscles to sleep by foam rolling for 20 minutes. And then they try and sprint and they're like, well, I can't do this. It's like, well, you just turned your muscles off. Like, so there is a balance of like a sweet spot of, of reps and movement to keep it active, keep the blood flowing, keep the heart rate up yeah. and then activate it again before you get into the movement. Cause if you're just foam rolling for a while and laying on the ground, it's not super helpful yeah. to then do high intensity yeah, I, work. I would say I'm, I'm also in the same boat and I think people tend to lead warmups the way they like to go through a warm up. So <laughs> you will find a lot of my warm ups are if we're standing, we're doing bend and bows. If we're mm -hmm. on the floor, we're doing child's pose into up dog. And I'm like asking people, like, start taking some stock. What feels good? What doesn't yeah. feel good? Because even just doing those simple movements, you'll start to realize like shoulders, hips, back. Something is like, oh, this feels good. This doesn't feel good. Sore, not sore, which gives you a little indication then of like, oh, maybe I want to spend more time here. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to help loosen it up, but I definitely like easing my way into movement through, you know, taking the body through some different ranges of motion, kind of opening up some of those joints that maybe we weren't using a whole lot throughout the day versus jumping right in. And I think it's important too for athletes to start to take notice of like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, this area is maybe tighter or doesn't feel as good as others. And I think that leads me into another question that a lot of athletes have is like something feels like tight or it feels yeah. like I can't move it. Is that bad? Should I avoid, you know, oh, my hip feels tight. I don't think I should squat below parallel today yeah. or like my shoulder feels tight. I don't think I should hang from a bar today. And how do you go about helping athletes kind of think about and work through that? Yeah. It is a challenging thing. You don't want them to push too far, but you also know that like tightness is not a sign that like something's going to tear 
or yeah. that like they're going to get injured from that. Yeah. I think, you know, the, their first response is to stretch it more. Yeah. Oh, my hip's tight. I'm going to do lizard again. It's like, well, we're past that point. So if it's like a big joint, like a hip or something like that, then I'll switch more to activation. Let's activate that hip flexor a little bit more and see yeah. if the problem persists. Like mm-hmm. we'll do some banded like knee raises and things like that. If it still hurts after that, then we'll evaluate a little bit more. We might stay a little higher in the squat and still work it. If it's something like a shoulder, I'm just very sensitive with shoulders yeah. in CrossFit. It's just such a like, you know, you do CrossFit for three months, you got a shoulder injury. Like that's it. That's just how it goes. So with those, I tend to pull back on the movement, but also like look at what part of the shoulder hurts. Is it? And then you have to get them to describe the pain because. Good luck. Yeah. So, you know, is it a burning pain? Is it a stinging pain? Is it an achy pain? Does it actually hurt or is it just sore? Like, well, and like you go through all these things, you try and piece together what's going on. With shoulders, I would change the movement probably Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. to kind of pull back and make sure that we're not going to put it in a hanging position when it's hurting really bad. I'd keep their feet on the ground and things like that. But the bigger stuff, like the squats and things like that, you can normally activate past the pain. Yeah. Yeah. If it's just like a tight hip flexor or yeah. something. Something that has always stood out to me, and this comes from like Kelly Starrett, is if we can get into certain positions without loading, without adding extra weight, things like that, it's usually a good sign of mm-hmm. like, hey, can we get into the bottom of the squat by just ourselves? And if we can do that, now maybe we start to add a little bit of loading. So if I ask you to get in the bottom of the squat and you're like, ooh, there's a sharp pinching sensation yeah. just for me hanging out down there. That might give me an indication that, okay, we're going to tweak or modify, figure out mobility later. Same thing, like, let's hang from a pull-up bar, just dead hang hold. What do we feel? I feel a good stretch. I feel like, you know, my spine is falling towards the floor. Great. All right, so we're okay there. Now we can add a little loading with Mm -hmm. some scat pulls or some things like that. So I usually like to think of it in terms of, like, can we get into a position without any sensations, pain, etc.? If we can, then it's usually a good idea that we can start to advance a little bit from there. Because like you said, as we build and start moving a little bit more, all of a sudden you get some blood flow to that joint. Yeah. You start to take it through some different ranges of motion. They're like, oh yeah, like that achy knee feels yeah. really good. Or that shoulder actually feels really good mm-hmm. now. And it's like, okay, so that initial like, oh, it's tight. Or, ah, I just think like I can't get into it. It's feeling it. tight. Right? Yeah. Okay. It's like, okay. That's <laughs> usually your body's way of uh, letting you know like yeah. hey either maybe we work something really hard or we just kept it in the same position yeah. for eight hours at your desk all day yeah. and it's not ready to just fully move the way you'd like it to so tightness doesn't mean injury doesn't mean mm. you can't get into certain positions but you start to be thoughtful on it now when we start looking at how many different resources there are to improve mobility because if somebody comes in and they say my hip is tight my ankle you know, dorsiflexion isn't very great. Mm -hmm. My shoulder can't move and flex and extend the way I'd like it to. Then people start turning to different apps, different resources, stretching, mashing, all sorts of stuff. How have you navigated those waters? Like what have you done that you've liked that has been worked for you? What are things you've tried that didn't work for you? Like how do you think about mobility work outside of the one hour class structure? So for me, you know, I'm hypermobile. So mobility hasn't been an issue. It's the stabilization and the strength within those movements because my joints will just kind of fly off the handle and then that's how they get hurt because they're not being controlled very much. So a lot of the stuff I've learned has been as a result of injury and coming back from that. So like I said before, whatever you can fit in is what's going to be best for you and it really does come with trial and error, which sucks to say because like some people will love just holding a stretching position. They feel great. They feel revitalized and that's awesome if that works for you. Um, But the majority of us need to be forced into a position because we're just like stiff all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think like for anyone starting out who's like, oh, I have terrible mobility, hit the big the money makers, chest and hips. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have shoulder pain and don't realize it's coming from the chest. Like you have to find where the actual source is. So like hitting those hips and chest, suddenly overhead squatting isn't as difficult. You know, if you just are working on those two things, finding some things that work for you without having to spend a lot of money. You don't have to buy the vibrating foam roller. You don't need to buy the scraping tools immediately. Like you don't have to get all this stuff. There's things you can do at home with what you already have with the couch, 
yep. and with a lacrosse ball that will give you a lot of bang for your buck. And then as you continue to like move forward in it, then maybe invest in those other things. Yeah, I would 100% agree. I feel like I've been somebody who's gone through all those different things of like having raw water pliability, having go wad, having different tools and devices. And what ends up being the most effective is just A, whatever you're going to use, mm -hmm. but then B, movement mm -hmm. to me is such a, a powerful way for mobility and like the simple things are like watching tv from the floor rather than yes. from the couch of like yeah. you're gonna force yourself to get into some different positions on the floor and the next thing you know you're like wow my hips are a little different because i was putting them into some different positions on the floor going for a walk throughout the day all of a sudden things aren't as stiff when you are wanting them to be able to move in a workout and then similarly to you Usually if injuries come up and you get to see a physical therapist or a chiropractor and they give you some exercises, those are the ones where I'm like, ooh, this is actually really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I can hang out in this position. Or maybe it's movement with a little bit of some resistance that helps me and that usually works its way into my warm-ups then as a coach. So when I think about navigating the waters, if you're somebody who's like, I want somebody to just guide me, I've got five minutes a day, go wad, pliability, Great apps, really phenomenal mm -hmm. for stretching and hanging out in some different positions, especially if you're not sure where to start. If you're somebody who is uh, looking for devices, I think, yeah, a lacrosse ball, a softball, a simple foam roller can be mm -hmm. really powerful tools yeah. to start off with and can probably accomplish 90 plus percent of what you are hoping to achieve yeah. there. And when it comes to some of those devices, foam rollers, lacrosse balls, softballs, Sometimes they're not enjoyable, a little painful. So yeah. what have you come to understand or use when it comes to the recovery tools? Yeah. Are we looking for pain? Or what are we trying so to do? So it's not like, you're not look. I mean, you're going to find it pretty easily. I mean, you could yeah. hit my calf right now and I'll scream because they just stay tight, you know? Yeah. And we're not sponsored by Kelly Starrett in any means, but like great resource there. Yeah. We haven't even mentioned, the Ready State is a great resource. Yeah. Lots of videos, lots of information. And if you like someone who will over explain something to you great and then the biggest thing i've taken away from him is like you need to keep breathing yeah and that like goes for everything if you keep breathing in high anxiety situations in any sort of situation you'll normally get through it pretty pretty well but if you find a pain spot as long as it's not sharp stabbing that's that's bad but if it's like that feeling in your gut that makes you want to throw up a little bit that is probably just like a tight muscle that uh, happens in my calves a lot, things like that. You just got to make sure you can breathe in that space because once you can breathe in it, as K-Star says, you own it, right? Like mm -hmm. now you are in control of it. You've allowed your like fight or flight to calm down and now the parasympathetic is kicking in and like we're really – the breathing is super important if you find a yeah. tight spot. A lot of people want to overreact and be dramatic and, and you can do that for like a second. But then you really got to breathe through it while you're doing it. And that normally lends itself to some pretty good results. Yeah. And that lets you kind of know what sort of pressure to apply. Because mm -hmm. if I like all of a sudden just put all my body weight into something and I can't even like physically tolerate it, well, that tells me, hey, back off, <laughs> find the pressure where I can breathe, nice, deep, slow, diaphragmatic breaths. Okay, now maybe apply a little bit more pressure. And it's this general uh, ease into using those tools rather than thinking of this like really aggressive mashing of yeah. the body because it's not necessarily designed to do that. Yeah, it doesn't all have to be painful and terrible. Like we, I mean, we do CrossFit, so we're a little sadistic in the first place, but like just because it's painful doesn't mean it's working, right? It might just be you're releasing high levels of cortisol and now you're screwed anyways because you were in this panic state. So yeah. it can be okay, like you can ease into it, breathe into it, and then continue to progress from there for sure. Yeah. So when we start looking at some of the mobility and recovery strategies, one, if you like doing it on your own, investing in some really simple tools, a foam roller, lacrosse mm -hmm. ball, softball, and find some of those tools that you can ease into, gentle pressure, and you can increase that as it feels tolerable. If you're somebody who wants to be guided, the apps, GoWad, pliability, YouTube videos like Ready State, really powerful resources mm -hmm. as well to leverage. And then really just hanging out in certain positions, like yeah. hang out in the bottom of your squat while you're, you know, waiting for something for 30 seconds to a minute, get on the floor and get into a 90, 90 position mm -hmm. with your hips where you've got the couch there, you know, throw one leg up, other leg in front into this couch stretch. And you'd be surprised how those little ways in which you're moving your body throughout the day make a big impact yeah. on the one hour of fitness where it maybe matters a little bit more to you what positions you can 
or can't get into. Um, and then the last thing is, you know, talk to your coach. If yeah. you are somebody who's like, man, my wrists hurt really bad and I can't get into this front rack position, there's probably a lot more there than just your wrists. We're probably looking at your lats. We're looking at your shoulder. We're looking at a lot of other pieces that can fit into this puzzle that help you. Yeah. And they can give you some little extra stretches to do before class. Hey, I see we're in the front rack today for squats or thrusters. Like, let me do a little bit of extra work before class starts. Or I know my ankles need mm-hmm. a little extra love and attention. What can I do? You know, ask a coach. I think that's always helpful. As some people like to get to class five, ten minutes early. Not all the members here like to do that, but some do. And uh, what they like to do is, you know, hop on a bike, yeah. get a little bit of that body movement in before class starts just to kind of get some of those joints feeling a little bit better before you jump into class. Yeah. And you, like, you know, we, we have you for an hour a day yeah. and you, you know, the other 17, 18 hours of your day, however much sleep you get, like that's where it counts. Yeah. Like we are going to help you as much as we can for that hour and give you tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff. But like if you're doing stuff in those other hours of the day, that's where you can really make up the space mm-hmm. in those mobility and like recovery games for sure. Yeah. And it's funny how it's the little movements throughout your day that will indicate sort of where your mobility yeah. is at. Like for us, we've got a front loading washer dryer. So like the idea of like squatting down and like holding that position as you're like changing things in and out rather than like bending over Mm -hmm. or bending down off the ground to pick something up. All of a sudden you're like, wow, I can get into this position and my knee or my ankle isn't flaring up or my hip or you know what So those little indications too kind of let you know if you're on the right track, I think when it comes to mobility. Mm -hmm. So if we can get into a position without any tension or weight or anything like that, Great first starting point. Once we can get there, then let's make sure that we can have some stability down there. We can control our body moving through that range of motion. And then finally, we can load it up a little bit, start to add some weight, add some resistance. And that's a nice little way to think about mobility, I think, of can I get into a position? Can I breathe there? Can I hold this position? And then can I add some weight and feel strong in that position? And if there's some parts along the way where we can't do that, then that's your cue to let's go check that out and see if there's ways I can work on that a little bit yeah what would be like one mobility tool that you would have with you all the time Mm. it's funny because now now I actually feel like I'm mobility tool less because I like used to use a lot of them um I if I if anything I'd say a mat now that I'm thinking about it because I consider myself a bigger athlete and even on the (laughs) rubber mats like yeah. getting to certain positions my knees like just the force against even rubber mats mm-hmm. i just appreciate having just a little bit of padding if i'm in lizard going through different yeah. yoga flows um getting in the 90 90s you know all of a sudden like a bony part of a hip or a knee yeah. hits that floor and there's like that really sharp sensation so for me just having a mat that i can be able to get on the floor where i like to do most of my stretching or mobility work is probably my number one tool. So the three quarter inch rolled out um, pliability mats are probably my favorite thing. Yeah. So how about you? What would you say is your? So I mat? used to love like all the tools. I do yeah. love my voodoo floss. It just takes yeah. a little bit to get in. Look up voodoo floss. It's a whole thing if I went into explaining it. But um, I think my toe spacers. Oh yeah. Now because. I think they're great and like you can buy from, not sponsored again, you can buy from toe spacers or like there's plenty of them on Amazon, but like you take your shoes off, you got your socks off, toe spacers on, you're barefoot around the house, you're much more conscious and it's like, you know, it's easy money. I'm doing all my other stuff and I got my toe spacers on, I'm good. Like I'm already working on it and like your feet are just so crucial to everything else. So making sure they're in good shape is super helpful for making sure your knees, your hips, your back, all that is in good shape as well. So I think I would make sure I had those because... They make my feet feel good. Yeah. yeah. I'd say it's always great to have the go-to tool. And then I always think it's great to have a go-to resource, whether it's like physical therapist, somebody you follow mm-hmm. online, you know, even a chiropractor, massage therapist who can help go like the extra mile then too. It can yeah. like actually put you through maybe some different assessments or check out some different body parts and tell you where you could have some improvement. Um, Cause I know having gone through a couple assessments of like, checking ranges of motion and checking how your body moves and how you can realize one side moves so much differently than the other. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden you're like, wow, like now I actually know what I need to work on versus just being like, oh, my hips suck or my yeah. ankle sucks. Like, yeah. no, actually like, let's see if it's true or not mm-hmm. by testing it 
and then we can work from there. So I think that's also something that is really helpful as well. Yeah. And like, lastly, like just drink more water. I mean, and get more sleep, but yeah, yeah that's always a tough one, right? Yeah. But the drink more water, we can control. Yeah. We uh, can't always control how much sleep we yeah. get, but drinking more water is super helpful. Keeps your joints in better shape, keeps your muscles in better shape, and helps you recover better, too. So just, you know, drink more water. Yeah. That's the answer to everything. That's, it, it's, it's funny <laughs> how we can get really complex with things, and then when we bring it back, it is really simple. It's yeah. like, move a little bit, drink a little bit more water, get into some different positions you might get to in normal life, do it a little bit more often, Yeah, you will be surprised at how much your mobility improves. Yeah. So we might not need all the fancy tools and whatnot. But They're fun, though. They are fun. They're nice to use yeah. once in a while. Um, and the marketing gets you every time. Yeah. Like that cross, that one CrossFitter will tell you this fixed all their problems, and you're like, well, i got to fix my problems, too. Mm -hmm. Give me that. Give me the one <laughs> magic bullet that will solve all my mobility problems. Yeah, so. yeah. If only work like that. But be nice. Well, we'd love to hear what are some of your favorite mobility, either movements, stretches, tools, resources uh, that you found to be really helpful. As always, we're always here to help answer any questions that you have or help along with your health and fitness journey. So we look forward to the next time we catch you on our Greater Culture Chats. Bye.